till now we have controlled appliances using Alexa, maybe with the help of Syndric, maybe with the help of IFTTT or many other you know, cloud servers out there. But now in this video, I'm going to teach you a method of creating our own voice application for controlling the same appliances using Alexa just like this. Which appliance you want to control? Turn on switch one. Switch one is turned on. Now the benefit of making our own custom voice application is that uh, by making our own application we get total freedom okay the project will get more flexible we can just tweak that project according to our need our demand and our purpose so that's the benefit of this uh, voice application and that being said let us start making our own voice application for home automation project let's get started so now if i give you a basic overview about how the voice application will be working then here the appliances which are connected to the node mcu board are already connected with the blink iot server that means we can already control those appliances using blink application so so that the project we have already made in the past okay so now uh, in the voice application what we are going to do is we'll be making application in such a manner that according to our voice commands a particular api link will be requested by that voice application and according to the api link the appliances will get turned on and off that will be totally based upon that particular api link so that's the basic overview about how the voice application will be working okay that being said let's just start picking the project so first of all uh, for the hardware part of the project you need to have all these components with you well here i have also used a 16 channel multiplexer module just to add multiple sensor to this node mcu board now there is no need of those sensors and multiplexer module in this particular video but that will be definitely helpful in the upcoming video where I am going to teach you about how you can ask Alexa regarding the real time status of your appliances and also ask Alexa regarding what is the value of any of the sensor attached to the node MCU board. Yes that is possible and that will be covered in maybe upcoming videos so just stay tuned and just subscribe the channel. Okay, so coming back to this video, now the list of all the components I have used in this video and their connection diagram is already attached in one of the article whose link is attached in the description of this video. So after this video, you can just go ahead, uh, watch that or read that article to know everything regarding this particular project. Okay, so now as there were a lot of connections in this project, what I did is I just designed my own custom PCB to make this project more compact. Okay, and after designing the PCB, I just gave its order to GLC PCB directly. Now GLC PCB is an online PCB ordering platform where you just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the color masking if you want and place your order. Now using the FedEx International Courier Service, you can get the PCBs delivered at your doorstep within 10 to 15 days of ordering. So try out GLC PCB for making your project looks neat and more compact. After getting the PCBs and shorting the components on it, our project looks like this. So that was all about the hardware part of the project. Now let's first configure the Blink application. So open up the Blink app on your smartphone and click on new project. So give a name according to your choice. I will name it as voice flow. Great. Choose the device as node MCU board as we are going to use node MCU board for our project. And connection type is Wi-Fi. Just click on create project. So an authentication token will be sent to your register email ID which will be required at the time of coding and also at the time of making our own voice application okay. So right now just click on okay. Now just tap on the screen and add a button here. Now tap on that button to configure it. Give a button name you can again name it uh, according to your choice. I will name it as uh, relay1 okay. Uh, choose the pin as virtual pin v1 and mode as switch. So that's all the configuration that you need to do inside this button setting. Just click on OK. So similarly, you have to add three more buttons in this particular Blink application as the project that we are going to make has four relays attached to it. Just to save our time, I already made a Blink project with all the four buttons on it with uh, virtual pin V1, V2, V3 and V4. So I already created this project. So, so that was all about the Blink application. Now let us jump onto the computer for the coding and the voice application part. So here is the code that we are going to upload onto our node MCU board for our voice application project and basically this is the same code that we have used for our blink projects okay. So this is completely based on blink library and blink functions. Let us still understand this code line by line. First of all the necessary library that is the blink that you need to have onto your Arduino ID. If you don't have already you just need to go to sketch into include libraries into manage libraries. <coughs> Here you just need to search for blink. And just install this library that's it okay after you install the blink library you need to provide the authentication token which must be sent to your register email id so just go to the inbox of your register mail id and copy the authentication token 
and paste it here. That's it. Then you have to provide the set name and password of your Wi-Fi router as this project do require internet connection for it's working. After that, we have defined the switch uh, according to the relays attached to the Node MCU board. So it is attached to D6, D2, D1 and D5 pin of the Node MCU board. So that's pretty uh, basic or pretty simple to understand. After that, let's just see the setup part of the project. We have just declared all the pins as output and initially we have just provided a signal a load to that all relays. Great. After that, we are beginning the blink communication with this blink dot begin function. And after that, in the void loop, we are running one single command that is blink dot run, which will be, you know, uh, handling all the tasks related to the blink. Okay. Now let's just see how we are able to control the relays attached to the node MCU board. So now all the buttons that we have programmed onto the uh, blink application are attached to the V1, V2, V3 and V4. That means basically they are all attached to the virtual pins. Okay. So as soon as we turn on and off the virtual pin V1 or the button one on the blink application, this function will be called. And according to the data received from the button side, maybe it's one or zero. We are just turning on and on the relay attached to that pin. That is the switch one. Okay. Similarly, if any data is coming from the button 2 or virtual pin V2, we can say we are just reading out the data like what data we are getting and accordingly we are turning on and off the switch 2. Similarly for switch 3 and similarly for switch 4. So that was a pretty basic code for our project. We are just, you know, looking for the virtual pins and according to the data received, we are just turning on and off the appliances. That's pretty much it about the coding part. After that, you just need to select the board as Node MCU board, select the right port and hit the upload button, which will upload the code directly to your Node MCU board. So that was all about the coding part. Now we are still left with one more configuration or one more application that is our voice application. And for that, we are going to use a platform called voice flow. Now I already made a separate video on how to use this voice flow, uh, which is uploaded onto my YouTube channel. So if you're hearing this voice flow term for the very first time, I'll suggest you to go and watch out the previous video, which will make you more comfortable with this application or with this platform. Okay. So after going to voice flow application, you just need to log in with your account. So after uh, logging to your voice flow account, you will get a page like this. So here you have to create a new project. So right now I'm going to be able to uh, create more projects because for the free account, we are uh, limited to make two projects only. And I already made two projects here. Okay. So, but in your case, you just need to click on create new project and it will ask for the project name. You can give name according to your choice. In my case, I've given the name as control appliances. So that's how you can create a new project. Okay. So after you create a new project, you'll get a canvas like this. You won't be getting all the blocks inside it because I already uh, you know, configured the application. You'll just get one single block called as start block onto your canvas. Okay. So, uh, what I will do in this video is I will just guide you about what the purpose of each block and what's the each block doing in this particular voice application. I won't be creating this application all over again because it will be really time consuming. Okay. Still, I will explain everything in much detail. So you will be comfortable enough to make your own voice application. So don't worry. Okay. Starting with the start block. So as soon as you create a new voice application, this block will be uh, by default created. So the purpose uh, of the start block, which we already discussed in the previous video is to just open our own made voice application. In my case, I've given the name of the project as control appliances. So uh, in my Alexa smart speaker, if I need to open this application, I need to say Alexa open control appliances, and then uh, this application will be opened inside the speaker. So uh, after after start block, I have one more block called as voice block, which you can just drag and drop uh, simply like this. Okay, I'll delete this. So as soon as the uh, we are inside the voice application, the Alexa will say welcome to the studio, which appliance you want to control. Okay, so that was uh, provided by me, uh, you can provide any statement which you want uh, to be, you know, uttered by Alexa. So that's the flexibility we get by making our own voice application. Here you can write any string, any statement according to your choice. Okay. And after that, Alexa will be waiting for the user's input for that. I have put a block called as choice block. You can just drag and drop a choice block like this. Okay. So here you have to define the paths. So here in my case, I have defined eight different paths. If I open this choice block. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, I have eight different paths for four different appliances for each appliances. I have on and off path separately written. Okay. Let us see what I have mentioned inside the uh, path. Okay. If I click on first on path, I have defined four different or four synonymous sentences like switch one on turn on switch one relay one on turn on relay one. So these all are the statements which will be expected from the user here. You can type uh, a different, different synonymous sentence, maybe 
turn on uh, light one you can add according to your choice okay so this is all that the statement that are expected from the user that we have to mention here okay so for the first on path i have defined all the statements for turning on the first switch similarly for the first off i have defined all the synonymous statements for turning off that switch or turning off that relay so this is how you have to create different different paths and in that path you have to define different different synonymous statements that are expected from the user okay so that's how i have created all the eight paths for four appliances and in case users tell something other than this four button maybe user can say hey turn on uh, fifth switch but that is not at all configured here in the project so what it will do the project will go here in the in the else part of this choice block and it will say oops that appliances is not added in the system try controlling some other appliances so this is again a speak block i have dragged and dropped here and given a statement according to my need okay according to my purpose and as soon as the Alexa speak this, it will start again with the choice block. So it will still be, you know, uh, waiting for the user's input. Okay. Now let's just see if user utters the correct statement, what happens. So if user utters that, hey, Alexa, just turn on switch one. So this particular path will be satisfied. So what will be happening? Uh, let's just see it, this is connected with this particular block. Now this particular block is new, which is not at all discussed in the previous video as well. So this block is called as the API block. So you just need to drag and drop that API block here and you'll get a screen like this okay I'll just delete it and open this one block okay so here we have to provide a custom API that need to be requested as soon as the condition is satisfied okay so right now as the user said turn on switch one we need to actually turn on the virtual pin v1 on the blink application side okay now how we are going to do that by using this simple API key. Now the API key format is uh, something like this, which I already mentioned in my notes. So the API key looks like this. So first of all, we have to provide the IP address of the Blink server, which is 188.166.206.43, okay? And after that, we have to write forward slash and we have to provide the authentication token, which was already sent to your registered email ID, okay? So that authentication token you have to mention here. After that, uh, forward slash update, then forward slash the pin number that you want to change, okay? In this particular switch one case, we need to uh, change the status of virtual pin V1. Hence, we have to write the virtual pin V1. Then we have to add one parameter by writing question mark. Then value is equal to one if you want to turn it on and value is equal to zero if you want to turn it off. So it totally depends upon our need. Okay. So I already added my authentication token and virtual pin V1 in the pin number. So my API link looks like this. Okay. So if I request this link, it will be turning on the virtual pin V1 on my Blink account. Okay. So that link is already requested here with the value one as we are going to turn on the relay. And here we need to add one header, which is content type and application slash JSON as we are expecting the response in the JSON format. So the single header you need to add, you don't need to write anything in the parameters. Okay, just add this link. We'll be requesting by the get request method and we'll be just adding one header for application slash JSON. So that's really it by requesting this link, we will be able to turn on the uh, virtual pin V1 on the Blink application side. And ultimately it will be turning on the switch one attached to the node MCU board. So that's uh, the power of an API, okay? So let's see what happens the next. So if the API is successfully requested, I again, you know, uh, drag this uh, speak block here and Alexa will say switch one is turned on. And in case the request was not successfully uh, requested or in case of some failure, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, uh, asking Alexa to speak appliances doesn't seems to be responding try again later okay so that will be the statement spoken by alexa in case of any failure of that requesting of api link okay similarly for turning off the switch one let me just show you uh, the link will remain the same only the value will become zero initially it was one and right now it will become zero for switch two the link will remain same but the virtual pin will become v2 and value will become one to turn it on for uh, turning the relay two off or the switch two off the virtual pin will become V2 and the value will become zero. So similarly, you can control as many virtual pins you want by using this simple API link provided by the Blink servers, okay? So that was basically it about this uh, voice flow diagram, okay? I will attaching the screenshot of this voice flow diagram onto my article so that it becomes easier for you to take a reference uh, while making your own application, okay? So that was all about the voice application. I just need to click on upload to Alexa button, which will be uploading this voice flow application into my Alexa smart speaker, okay? So we are done with the coding and voice application as well. So that was everything that you need to do for making this project. Now let's just see this project in action. action. 
After uploading the code to the Node MCU board, I have connected all the bulbs to this PCB. And I powered up this project with the help of 9V 1A power adapter. Now let's first try controlling this project with the help of Blink application. Okay, so we are successfully able to control the appliances using the Blink application. Now let's just try controlling it with the voice application that we made. Alexa, open control appliances. Welcome to the studio. Which appliance you want to control? Turn on switch 1. Switch 1 is turned on. Great, so we were able to control the appliances using our own made voice application. Amazing, isn't it? Now hit the like button if you really learned something new, learned something interesting from this video. And wait, we are not done yet. We are still left with getting the real-time status, the real-time feedback from the Alexa smart speaker. Yes, we are going to do that and that will be a topic for our upcoming video, okay? Now sh smash the like button and let me know how much excited you are regarding the next or upcoming video. Let's just keep an aim of 500 likes and uh, just do that right now. And uh, according to the likes, I will come to know that uh, how much excited you are for the upcoming video. So just do that right now. And also let me know in the comments uh, regarding any suggestion of this voice application. And let me know uh, if you can make this voice application way more better than what I made right now. Let me know in the comments. And once again, all the necessary details regarding this particular project is mentioned in one of the articles whose link is mentioned in the description of this video. So just go ahead and you'll get all the details regarding this project and in that article. Okay. So that being said, just subscribe my channel if you haven't already. And now just wait for my next video and then explore, learn, share with me. Techie SMS.